All right, we're in Rats Mechanical Room now. So, as you can see, I have two 20 by 20 return air grills here. This is my return air probe. I have the supply air probe down in the supplier air plenum, and I got the 435 uh, 2.4 inch rotating vane anemometer, the 435 head. We've already input the uh, correct dimensions for the square foot in here. So what we're going to do is we are going to choose show you right here we're going to choose mean we're going to go to multi-point and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to traverse the grill and I'll hit this button right here which is for pick and we're going to do an airflow calculation now this is an inner therm you know air handler for what it's worth hooked up to a ream outdoor unit as you can hear, it's variable speed. It's it's throttling up and down, uh, and we'll get into why that does that in a little bit. But this isn't your typical inner therm system. The front door here that used to be the return air grill is no longer return air grill. It's completely blanked off. It only draws return air in from the two return air grills. In fact, inside the return air grills, I have uh, the Honeywell four inch pleated filters. These are the four inch pleated filters that fit inside of a one inch filter grill. As you can see, let me see if I can get this right there. See this header right here? This actually fits on the one inch filter grill and then you have the four inch portion that, that goes down into it. So these are, these are a really good option if you haven't seen them for people who do want better indoor air quality or the return air is a little small and you're getting an excessive pressure drop across the filter this is a real good option They're a little more expensive but uh, you get what you pay for is what I always say so put the return air sensor back in and now what we're going to do is we're going to go across each of these if you look on the anemometer there's an arrow and that arrow indicates which direction this anemometer was calibrated in. So always try to get the arrow, the direction of the air flow. And so what I do is I'm going to go down through here and like I said this thing is variable speed based on temperature inputs of the coil and the return air. So it's not going to be your typical three and a half ton air flow uh, like you would expect. So we're going to go down through here and we're going to pick keep it about a half an inch away from the face of the grill and we're going to just go down each row, each column of louvers here, and we're going to do a, a pit every four or five t uh, times on each column. And we're just going to go back up, and we're going to hit pick, and we're going to hit pick, and we're going to hit pick. And we're going to do this on both grills because we have the area input for both grills, right? We hit these all the way down, all the way up. Try to keep the anemometer flat to the face on the return air and even with the direction of the louvers on a supply air. So all we do is go down here and we hit pick and we pick all these. Well it just shut off. So we're not going to get a very good reading. So we took the reading and it shows on the screen here of the 435 that we took 40 readings, 40 airflow samples, and it'll give you, uh, as soon as we hit end, average feet per minute and average CFM. So we're going to hit end. So our average feet per minute was 118 feet per minute. Our average CFM, 638. So you can see that this system, while it ran for the short time that it was running, was running at... Um, about a ton and a half of capacity which is what the uh, ICM control module determined it, it needed to be running at. 